Revelation 12:12. 12, 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So I had this dream um, last night. It's March 7, 2020. And um, it's another revelation dream from the book of Revelation about uh, the beast being summoned and uh, about to be empowered and to take his position. So we're talking about the Antichrist, the beast, the Antichrist in the book of Revelation. So I'm going to stick to my notes so I can cover a lot. Are we in the fourth seals right now? Are we entering into the fourth seals where the fourth of the earth shall be killed through plagues, pestilence, earthquakes, flood, famine, war, etc.? Is God showing us that we are in the fourth seals with the coronavirus and all the other things? You know, the um, tornadoes recently, um, earthquakes just happening nonstop all over the place and floodings and so many other um, catastrophes and violence and murders and of course the ongoing genocide of unborn babies. It's just unreal. Are we in the fourth seals and we'll be entering into the fifth seals is what I'm wondering. All right, so I believe the Lord is giving us this prophetic warning dream to prepare the church so that we are aware and know the time and seasons that we're in and um, that the Antichrist is getting ready to take his position to rule for a short time as the word of God has prophesied. Revelation 6, 9, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. I believe that we are um, entering into the great tribulation, the persecution of the saints and the martyrdom of the saints. Yes, we've seen it throughout different parts of the world, North Korea, China, Africa, India. However, this is going to be a global persecution and martyrdom of the saints. Um, just as the word of God tells us under the Antichrist. Revelation twelve seventeen, And the dragon was enraged at the woman and went to make war with the rest of her children who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. The dragon, Satan, the devil, will go after people like me, people like you, who believes and keep the testimony of our God. You know, um, he hates the children of God. He hates humanity, but especially those who keep the testimony of Jesus Christ. He's nothing but evil, filled with hate. Revelation thirteen seven. Then the beast was permitted to wage war against the saints and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation. Revelation thirteen eleven says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spoke as a dragon and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and he causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. This is a part of my dreams. That's why I'm using these scriptures. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he hath power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which hath the wound by a sword and live and lived. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause to be killed as many as would not worship the image of the beast also a part of my dream and he causes all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand 
or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save that he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So a part of the message of this dream is do not bow to the beast. Okay? Do not bow to the Antichrist. All right. The reason why we don't want to bow to the Antichrist and take his number or name on our right hand or on our forehead is because for all who will and all who does will be cast into the lake of fire and will be damned and will suffer torments along with the beast, the Antichrist, and the false prophets forever and ever and ever in tormenting pain. And we don't want to do that. Revelation 14, 9 says, And the third of the angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and received his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, Jesus. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I just had that image and then I realized so many of my family Jesus. so many of my family in my home church people church friends this may be their destiny if they do not repent I can't imagine this But God is just, God is just. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of, faith of Jesus. Excuse me, guys. So, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. We don't get to rest, guys, <laughs> until our Father says we're done here. Amen. <laughs> but our rest will be sweet. And it's worth it. Man, what was that? I did not mean to fall apart, but the Holy Spirit just grabbed hold of my heart and when I read that verse and realized and seeing the faces of my loved ones that has not surrendered to Christ that mocks that mocks the very God that I love and serve the God that loves them that died, died for them it's heartbreaking it's heartbreaking all right so there were many other details to this dream, but they were about my personal family and relationships. So I'm not going to disclose that portion since I feel it's irrelevant to share. Let me turn this down. I want to get this prophetic dream out to you guys, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. <sighs> Let him who has ears hear. All right. 
So in this dream, I was talking to Obama out in the open fields. I can feel and sense that there was a spirit of sexual lust, attraction, desires operating between us. I want to make it clear that um, I'm not attracted to Obama in any way, shape or form. Um, I don't think he's ugly. Um, he's just not my type. I'm not attracted to him. But in this dream, he was super physically attracted, sexually attracted to me. So it's uncomfortable sharing this. And every time I share any dreams about Obama, I get the meanest, most hateful, wicked, vile human beings on earth that pops up and curse me out. <laughs> God bless you if you're one of them. <laughs> you can curse me all you want, but you cannot curse anyone that God blesses. And I pray that the Lord have mercy and grace upon your soul. And I pray that he will give you the gift of repentance and salvation. Jesus loves you. <laughs> all right, let me keep going. Um... All right, I have a godly agape love and compassion for Obama, and I have prayed for his soul and family, especially when he was in office, but never had any types of physical desires or sexual attractions towards him. I wanna make sure everyone understands this, but in this dream, there was a strong physical desire, sexual desire that he had for me. So while we were chatting in broad daylight, the open fields, Lo and behold, from up above in the skies, a powerful supernatural blazing red fiery being, a huge reddish orange, huge being in the forms of fire, appeared up in the skies above tall trees and the voice of this mighty red fiery being called out to Obama and summoned him into his role and position into service for this powerful being. Obama immediately recognized this being and called him his God. So he responded to this powerful being up in the sky, speaking in a powerful voice of authority to Obama, which I was not made uh, known to me that what those words were he, that he spoke. But I knew that it was Obama's God and Obama turned to me and commanded me, tell your church people to bow down and worship my God. He ordered me to do this two or three times tell your church people to bow down and worship my god but i knew that being up there uh, that being that superpower that red fiery being up there in the skies was not my god so i refused to tell my church friends to bow down to worship his god but i was curious and thought silently to myself and said what if i pretended to go along and bow down so I can see and know what this God, Obama's God and Obama will do. You know, like when you are a kid and you're playing hide and go seek and like you tell uh, the people that's supposed to go hide and you're the one that's supposed to be closing your eyes and counting and then, you know, you kind of cheat and you did something like this, you're like, go hide you know and you're counting well that's what I was thinking that if I just pretend and to bow so I can maybe hear and see what's gonna happen so that's what I was thinking um, all right where am I at okay what if I pretend to go along and bow down so I can see and hear and know what this God Obama's God and Obama will do but my heart was true to the living God and I knew that, but I was considering bowing down and going along just so I could see if I could further see and know and hear what they were going to do if I played along to pretend to worship his God. But as I was pondering these things, Obama walked over to me, like super close and intimately close, like lovers would get intimately close to each other. And he was behind me and he was... um like sniffing on my neck you know like he was behind me um like sniffing and caressing my neck like in a sexual manner and um all of a sudden all of a sudden like he was shocked like he had this shocking look like he realized that the dna in me 
he had supernatural power and ability to know who I was deep down inside. He knew that my DNA was his enemy. Um, so he began to question and identify my birth, origin, and nationality and asked if my origin, my original name was, which I can't remember what he said. He asked about the country, he, the country that he identified me from, a country near Egypt. Like he knew that my DNA, my birth origin was from this country. So he began asking me questions of my former birth name because disappointedly he realized that my DNA, which is my born again, this is symbolic, my born again DNA is from the seed of Abraham, from the Messiah, King Jesus. I am a born again child of the living God and my DNA is the Holy Spirit. So I was his enemy in this dream. And he, in this dream, Obama identified my birth origin to be uh, somewhere near Egypt. He said that, Egypt. And so when I woke up, I Googled countries near Egypt. <laughs> and the first thing on the list was um, Israel. Uh, Israel is 424 kilometers distance from Egypt. So. I believe that's just a prophetic, an amazing prophetic um, uh, symbolism that um, we as born again children of God, of God, even though we are Gentiles and we're not Jews, you know, our origins, because our Messiah was a Jew, he was born there in Israel, and um, we who have been grafted, amen, um, through faith by faith, we are children of Abraham, our seeds, uh, we are seeds of Abraham. We came from um, our Messiah, our, our line of Judah, our King Jesus, amen. So I thought that was pretty awesome. So immediately, right around this time I looked up, I was given a vision within this dream of the things to come. It's like I saw the red um, fiery, being um the dragon um he didn't look like a dragon but that's who he represented um revelation 13 and i forgot to look up the scripture was it revelation 19 one of those uh, revelation book talks about the dragon uh a red dragon um uh, that's what he represented so when i looked up i was shown this vision of this woman and other people too but i remember the woman running for life you know with her children away from this red fiery being that was blow, blowing fire <laughs> blowing fire and causing chaos making war and she was just running screaming for her life away from this red fiery being that was um breathing fire um like i said causing madness chaos and violence um making war with her and uh, her children uh, the people the inhabitants of the earth so that's what i saw um people were screaming and dodging death from various major apocalypse such as war persecution death martyrdom coming just as revelation 13 matthew 24 revelation 13 13 says and he doeth doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So that's what I was seeing. Towards the ending of this dream, I was going to family members. These are all professed Christians who go to church every week, who serves in church. They are three fourth generation pastors, pastors' wives and children, grandchildren. And their father had climbed the highest position in their de denomination. So I was in their home with a grandmother that was a pastor's daughter and her husband held the highest position in leadership possible in their denomination. She was surrounded by her sons and grandsons and I was trying to tell all of them with urgency that the Antichrist is about to rise. He is about to step into the scenes and the great tribulation will soon be here. But one by one, they all ignored me. They all turned a deaf ear to my warnings and care, and care in warning them to prepare. 
they were consumed with their daily mundane life of pa life affairs like you know what to eat and all of that they were sitting around a dining table and that's what they were concerned with they turned a deaf ear and ignored my warnings just like many 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 church folks um, that are um, hearing this they will turn a deaf ears I pray that you won't but most the majority will sadly enough they are asleep and unaware and don't care to truly seek after God's heart and truth so they remain deaf dumb and asleep they will not be prepared for the great testings and trials that are coming to test the whole world most of them believe they'll be flying out of here in the rapture before any hardship arrives they are sadly mistaken and is teaching their children and grandchildren these false lying doctrines traditions of man taught by lying pastors from one generation to the next and giving them false hope they will stand accountable for leading these sons and grandchildren astray by their lies revelation 3 10 says since you have kept my command to endure patiently i will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth.